Witam Was serdecznie. Z tej strony Łukasz Milewski, prosto z Singapuru. Jesteśmy teraz w wyjątkowym miejscu, z absolutnie wyjątkowym człowiekiem, z którym przyjemność będę miał za chwilę rozmawiać. Tym człowiekiem jest Mick Wucic, gigant życia. Człowiek, który zmienia miliony ludzkich istnień. Ktoś, kto inspiruje w niebywały sposób, kogo mam zaszczyt dzisiaj poznać i przedstawić Wam, a kto już niedługo odwiedzi także Polskę. Szanowni Państwo, Mick Wucic. Hi, Nick. Hi. Thank you for having me here. I appreciate it. Hi everyone. Love you. Bardzo dziękuję, że przyjąłeś nasze zaproszenie. Jesteśmy bardzo zaszczyceni. To jest niezwykły moment dla naszego kraju i, i dla tego, co się dzieje w Polsce. I wierzę, że ten wywiad i twoja wizyta będzie początkiem cudownej transformacji w naszym kraju. You know, I'm thankful to travel all around the world and just share my story. Many people think that success is only about material things and being happy is based on what you can do or can achieve. But what I talk about is the richness of a soul, the richness of a spirit, to know that beyond our circumstances, uh, with faith and love, we can find hope, um, hope in every circumstance. And I, I just am so thankful to be coming to, to Poland for the very first time. Um, I've been wanting to come for a while. Um, I'm thankful uh, to, to just come and, and I really hope that many people are inspired and motivated to never give up and to dream bigger in their life. Mam pierwsze pytanie do ciebie. Wiem, że jesteś wspaniałym biznesmenem, który prowadzi różne biznesy. Jesteś cudownym mężem, jesteś cudownym ojcem, żyjesz pełnią życia. Jesteś także człowiekiem, który pomimo ograniczeń fizycznych żyje cały czas na fali. Jak ty to robisz? Uh, spiritually and physically, uh, for me, uh, it's, it's first of all waking up in the morning and saying, okay, today's another day and there are things that may happen that may be out of my control, but I'm going to do my best and trust God in the rest. And so when I travel around the world, I have a team of people to look after me physically. Um, you know, as a teenager, um, I, you know, did not know what kind of life I was going to have but I was determined to try brush my own teeth, comb my own hair, and I became independent. But uh, I'm, I'm okay to still ask people for help um, because, you know, we know that we all have different gifts and talents and um, getting myself ready in the morning isn't as such as a priority these days for me personally to become fully independent um, compared to my priority of just wanting to go out there and speak and share through my gifts and talents that I feel is, is more important than just becoming a person of independence. Uh, being a father is so incredible. Being a husband is so incredible. I used to have fears of what kind of intimacy I would, you know, can I hold my wife's hand? I can't, um, you know, hold my kids. How can I play with them? But we all know that God has a plan for everyone. Um, and I was told that by my parents. My parents were very religious and uh, they really encouraged me to know to never give up and to not be the person to limit my own potential. Some of us, we limit our own potential. And so I've seen that in my life. And I'm not a person to, you know, say everything's possible and everything's fine. I still go through ups and downs. I have a lot to work on. I, I'm, I'm still not the best husband. I'm still not the best father. And that's something I just continue to strive for, to live my best life and to love people around me the best as, as much as I can. Przez całe życie walczysz z wieloma wyzwaniami, pokonujesz wiele przeszkód, ale czy był taki moment, który zmienił wszystko, który sprawił, że obudziłeś się pewnego dnia i stwierdziłeś, tak, to jest ten moment, to jest ta chwila, żeby działać 
100%. When I was around 8, 9 and 10 years old, I was very depressed. I felt like there was no hope. In fact, I tried to even commit suicide because I felt I would be alone for the rest of my life. And I think the fear, the fear of being alone, the fear of what people think of me, and the fear of the future was really the thing that disabled me. Not the missing arms and legs. It's the disability of the heart and the mind. And I realized that age 13 was my first turning point in transforming. Uh, I played soccer. I love soccer. Uh, football, real football, right? Polish team is not good. Not no yet. good, don't worry. <laughs> A lot of my teams I like aren't that good either. But I, I actually hurt my foot playing soccer. And I was in bed for three weeks. And I thought, wow. I, I take my little foot for granted. My little foot, I'm able now to walk, to jump, to swim, to golf, to fish, scuba dive, skydive, very mobile. I use my cell phone, computer. I type 43 words a minute on a normal computer. And I realize, wow, I could either be very angry for what I don't have or be thankful for what I do have. And then at age 15 was when I started my faith journey with God to say, okay, God, I don't know what plan that I that you can see for my life. I don't know what that is, but if you do have a plan, show me. And I trust you. And so one day at a time. So I'd say it's more like a journey, more than a transformational point. But it was that faith journey that began, that began to transform me one day at a time. What is your biggest dream? <laughs> my biggest dream is to be um, the best husband I can be and the best father I can be first. And in that, obviously, my faith and family come first. My next biggest dream is to reach as many people around the world as possible. Because when I was 19, I spoke in front of 300 teenagers for a couple minutes. And I gave a very simple message of love and hope. And people were crying. And I'll never forget the look on people's faces, crying. And one girl, she said, thank you, thank you, thank you. No one's ever told me that they love me. No one's ever told me that I'm beautiful the way that I am. And I had the blessing of having a loving family around me. They always told me that they loved me. And they always told me that I was beautiful. And I know that if I was not told that, I wouldn't be here. So I thought to myself, wow. How many more millions and millions of people just need a simple message of love? So that's when I dedicated my life to traveling around the world and starting to speak. And so um, that's a dream. I just want to not just speak, but also um, really inspire the next generation to know that because of technology and the Internet, the world has become a smaller place. And I feel that one day one of my key missions in life is to bring about 100 or 200 million people together on one platform to give out a dollar a day or a dollar a month or just a dollar whenever they want to change the world, to stop world hunger, to build hospitals, to build schools. So when I say reach the world, it's in speaking and message, but also tangible action, love in action. That's what I want to do. So. Wielu ludzi na całym świecie, w Polsce, na całym świecie, wielu rodziców spotyka się z sytuacją, z którą musieli się zmierzyć twoi wspaniali rodzice, gdzie pewnego dnia okazuje się, że ich dziecko, mimo że tak naprawdę jest doskonałe, fizycznie nie jest doskonałe. I co byś powiedział tym ludziom, tym rodzicom, którzy na, na ten jeden moment, na tą chwilę mają zwątpienie, czują się źle z tym? Jaki przekaz masz dla nich? For me, my, uh, my, my first thing that I'm thankful to God for are the parents that, who loved me, who encouraged me, who believed in me. Uh, every day, um, they encouraged the government to put me into a normal school. And the one thing that my parents continued to be was persistent in giving me seeds of love. No matter what the world said, no matter what uh, students would say about me or bully or tease me uh, within, I, I felt like I could always come to a home of refuge. So we need to make our home a home of refuge, of love, um, to not just point out when they've done something wrong, but encourage them, uh, point out their strengths, point out their gifts and their talents. I know some teenagers feel like parents are just there to 
you know, correct you when you've done something wrong. They ask you about your homework. Um, you know, uh, make sure that you do good at school. But I feel like my, my parents helped me feel like my parents were friends. My parents made me feel like it was a friendship more than just parenting. Um, and so I know in Poland, it's, it's a country that perhaps has a lot less awareness of people with disabilities. Um, and if there are any parents out there who, who has a child with a disability, don't give up on them. Um, do your best. Um, pray with them. Um, maybe ask a church to help out as well or some organization. Um, I come from a Serbian home, so we had a big family. So I had many cousins, many uncles, many aunts, and that was a good place for my parents to have support within the family. Um, there was not much government support. There was not much medical support that we could find um, because no one really knew of my case before. And so we felt alone a little bit. Um, now, obviously, 30 years later, things have changed in Australia, but I just want to encourage everyone that within every country, there is a progression of integration and awareness and even education about people with different special needs. In fact, I just came from Malaysia and there was a girl with no arms and no legs and they brought her to a normal school, but some teachers, they didn't want her in the classroom, so they picked her up and put her outside. And so I just hope that my presence in Poland uh, encourages the government, encourages all the schools and teachers and students to integrate all people from all walks of life and different capabilities. We all have something to bring and we're all beautiful. Um, just because I have no arms, no legs, doesn't mean I shouldn't have equal opportunity to reach at least my full potential. My full potential doesn't need to look like yours, and your full potential doesn't need to look like mine. Yes. We just need to give each other a loving communication and a ground where we can all reach our full potential together. So instead of tearing each other down and limiting each other, we should be a nation that more Polish people help Polish people. Uh, we need each other uh, now more than ever. Wszyscy znają cię jako człowieka, który inspiruje ludzi w niezwykły, cudowny, wspaniały sposób. Powiedz mi, czy poprzez te wszystkie podróże, te miliony ludzi, których spotkałeś na swojej drodze, czy był ktoś, kto zainspirował ciebie? There was a, a friend of mine called Philip in San Diego, and uh, I did not know about him until I heard about his website. He had a Lou Gehrig's disease, which is a terrible disease, terminal illness. You cannot slow it down. You cannot reverse it. Um, where every muscle and nerve started shutting down and he became paralyzed. Soon he couldn't walk. He couldn't talk. Doctors gave him three months to live and he lived for another five years. In the five years, he didn't feel sorry for himself. He didn't really cry that much. He's like, okay. I accept I'm dying, I'm going to die, and I'm going to go to heaven. But before I go to heaven, I want to bring some people with me. And so he could barely move his head, and he had a laser technology that allowed him to type in the computer. He was so smart, so intelligent, um, that he could actually build a website all by himself. He did it all with this laser technology using a normal computer, and he started to share his story. And he did blogs and he did journal entries and he shared his thoughts and his faith and inspired hundreds and hundreds of people and he couldn't say a single word and he couldn't even walk out of his room. And I thought, wow, I want to meet this guy. So I went to meet him at his house and I was a little nervous. You know, what do I do? You know, people, they come up to me and Do they shake my hand? Do they give me a hug? I'm like, I don't even know what to do with him. I mean, I hope I can hug him somehow. He can't even put his hands around me. He couldn't talk. So I felt awkward. But as soon as I walked into the room, he looked at me and he, he just smiled. The biggest smile I've ever seen in my life. I'm like, wow, this guy can't walk, can't talk, inspiring people. He knows he's going to heaven. He's smiling. He inspired me. And I thought, wow, if he can't do so many things, but he can still inspire people, what am I going to do with my life? At least I can walk 
at least I can talk, and I know I'm going to heaven, but his sharing his story and saving people's lives, I'm like, that's it. If, if that's what he can do, I need to reach my full potential. So that was at 19 years old. So there were many friends and family members that encouraged me along the way, but in fact, many people think that it was my family who inspired me to be a speaker. That was not the case. The case was that the janitor, the cleaner of the toilets at my high school, was the one who first said, Nick, you're going to be a speaker. And I thought he was crazy. And so that janitor who was cleaning the toilets at my high school inspired me to be a worldwide speaker with the encouragement of others. And that proves to me that when I look at my son's future, I don't care what job he has, I don't care what money he has, as long as he has faith and he loves people and he's happy, that's it. And I've seen many poor people who are happy and I've seen many rich people who are unhappy. So it really comes to the mind, the spirit, and the soul. That's where the richness comes from. And the desire to give has, has been, to me, the most compelling part of what I do. It's when you see people receiving hope. Because you can't buy hope. And that's the cool miracle. So you don't need to get a miracle before you can be a miracle. Trzy lata temu podjąłem decyzję o tym, że z razem z moją partnerką Barbarą, która tutaj jest z nami, zmieniamy dotychczasowe nasze życie biznesowe, zmieniamy właściwie wszystko i podejmujemy decyzję o tym, aby organizować duże wydarzenia, duże eventy, także z naszymi wspólnymi, kochanymi partnerami Success Resources, dzięki tak naprawdę ich pomocy. Trzy lata zajęło nam to, żeby być w miejscu, w którym jestem tutaj, spełnić marzenie spotkania Ciebie jako człowieka, Wierzę w to, że każde marzenie jest możliwe. że w coś wierzysz, jesteś w stanie to osiągnąć. Wiem natomiast, że jest wielu ludzi, którzy mają marzenia, ale wierzą też w ograniczenia czasu, miejsca, wieku. Co tym ludziom byś powiedział? To me, I'm thankful that my dad has given me so much wisdom. He has helped me to accept the things that I simply cannot change. Uh, we can't change who our family is, but we can change who our friends are. We can't change the fact that I have no arms, no legs, but we can change how I deal with it and what I do with it. So we need to understand, first of all, who are we? Are we more defined in our mind by who we surround ourselves with? Do I need more friends to feel more secure? Do I need more money to feel more happy? Or is it that you realize that You are precious. You yourself. I don't care what you've done bad. I don't care what you've done wrong. I love you. I love each and every person on the planet. And I believe that the best potential can come out of even the worst scenarios or people. Um, I pray for my enemies. I pray for people who hurt me because I'm not the one with the issue. They're the ones with the issue. So there are some times where people just blame everything. I blame my family. I blame my friends. I blame my situation. I blame my government. I blame, I blame the economy. I blame, okay, okay, good. You blame it, but it doesn't change anything. So first of all, you've got to come back to who are you. So I am a creation of God. There's never been another me. There'll never be another me. I am Nick Vujicic. I was Nick Vujicic before I was a speaker. I was happy before I was a speaker. I was happy even before I got married. And I'm still happy that I'm married. That's fine. But what I'm saying is people blame their circumstance or situation or relate, uh, relational stuff. And, and they just blame the world because they're not happy. What you've got to see is, okay, who are you and who do you want to be and what do you want to do and why? When you know who you are, that you're precious, that you're beautiful, that it's not about what you do, but it's who you are first. How I love people, how I'm patient, how I'm kind. If I'm generous, am I a giver or a taker? Am I selfish or unselfish? Um, am I optimistic or am I always pessimistic? People around you will tell you what type of person you are. But you need to know, are you okay with that? And take control and responsibility 
of some of the things you can control. So I chose to be thankful, I chose to be loving, I chose to be forgiving, I chose to be caring, I chose to be compassionate because of my faith. God help me. But people got to move on, move forward, have a vision for your life. A man without vision dies. And when my mom and dad saw me for the first time, the vision that they saw for my future was not a nice future at all. My mom imagined that she would just put me in a corner and walk away, and if she comes back, I'd still be in the corner. She had no idea that I would roll around, get up, jump around, and do things. My parents never thought that their limbless child could be the hands and feet of love, hope, and faith, meeting presidents, speaking in 26 countries just last year, speaking at five congresses. There were just so many doors of opportunity that opened when they gave themselves and their child a chance. I think some of us need to give ourselves another chance. I think some of us don't know what can come from our broken pieces until we give the broken pieces a chance. So it's giving yourself a chance. It's knowing who you are. It's not about what money you have, what you do is, as a career, but it's how you love people and who you are that matters more than what you achieve in life. So do your best and get on your knees because I couldn't do anything without my faith in God. And so that's what I encourage everyone to know, that when your vision is not so good and all you can see is terrible, it's when you pray to God. Say, God, change this situation or carry me through it because no matter what storm we go through, when you actually fly above the storm clouds, it's calm when you get through it. So my storm didn't change, but my mind and my heart and my spirit did. Wow. Nick, thank you. I would like to say thank you for this meeting. That is very important for me. I would like to say thank you for my partner, Richard Veronica Katan from Success Resources, because uh, they helped me to realize this dream to meet you. Mm. And I think Polish people love you, and we will wait for you in Poland. Thank you. And can I say a quick message to all of Poland? Of course. Poland, I love you so much. God bless you. I never pretend that uh, everything is perfect because of positivity, but I always believe that faith in God is the first step to know that He is with you. You're not alone. Take one step at a time and know that Jesus loves you. I love you so much and I believe in you as a country. And uh, just from here in Singapore, I'm sending my love from me and my family. I look forward to seeing you all very, very shortly. Thank you. Do zobaczenia w Polsce.